All right, guys. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what exactly a shared module or a shared object is. It's something that confuses a lot of people whenever they start using modules. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. And actually, what I did is I cleaned out everything from the previous tutorial. So right now, we just have a blank app.js and a blank movies.js file. And I'm going to say this. So I'm going to make a new JavaScript file or module called emily.js I'm gonna make another one called bucky.js now say that we're making some kind of weird movie app let me clean all these comments up so say that we were making some kind of weird movie app maybe like a movie website and we have two users Emily and Bucky and they can like uh, set their favorite movies so maybe Emily's favorite movie is The Notebook and Bucky's is What's my favorite movie? Goodwill Hunting. All right. So in movies, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to use module exports like we learned before. And we're just going to make one variable called fave movie. And by default, we'll just set it to a blank value. So fave movie is blank by default. But of course, Emily and Bucky can change this to their favorite movies. So how do we do that? Well, let's hop over in Emily and we're just going to make a variable called movies and set this equal to require movies all right so now we imported everything that we wanted to so now what we can do is we can take movies and we can set fave movie equal to anything that emily wants like the notebook all right, everything is running good so far. And now let me just log it out to verify. So I'll say something like Emily's favorite movie is uh, movies. Holy crap, sausage finger movies, fave movie. All right, so nothing revolutionary here. What we did is we made a really simple movies module and then what Emily's is going to do is she's going to import that module, set her favorite movie to the notebook and then is just going to print it out. So now let's do the same thing for Bucky. So we can just copy that and actually I'm going to delete this middle line of code because that's what I want to demonstrate. So Bucky's going to import this module as well. However, I'm not going to set my favorite movie. I'm just going to leave a blank. So you may be like, all right, Emily's is going to be in the notebook. As we can clearly see, Bucky's is going to be blank. So it's going to print out Bucky's favorite movie is nothing. And uh, that's that. So now in our app.js, remember, this is our starting point, And all we have to do here is this. Um, we can actually just require Emily and Bucky as well. So again what this is going to do is just going to require these actually they were lowercase those two modules so check this out alright so it says Emily's favorite movie is The Notebook as we can see obviously nothing revolutionary or new there Bucky's favorite movie is The Notebook what the heck? I, wait a minute. I'm looking at this code and uh, yeah, I clearly did not set my favorite movie to the notebook. What the heck is going on? There must be a bug with Node.js. Well, this is what I want to explain in this tutorial. Whenever you use modules in Node.js, the default behavior is to share this module among every other file that imports it. Now, what that means is that Emily, she is actually changing this object directly and then Bucky gets the same changes as well so they don't each get a copy of this they're actually all referencing this exact same module now believe it or not this may be the functionality that you want for example say that all of these users were in the chat room and um, instead of movies this was like the chat log obviously they would all be looking at the same chat log and this is actually much better for performance and memory because instead of every single different module making a copy, they all just reference the same one. 
So again, for performance, memory, it's a lot faster, a lot more efficient, but obviously, as you can tell, in some applications, this isn't the behavior that you want. So if you do, then go ahead and use this style. But in the next tutorial, what I'm going to show you guys how to do is make something called object factories. And essentially what that does is it gives Emily and Bucky their own copy of this module. So yeah, for now, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.